Hello, my name is Anthony Omstritz, and this is my book talk for The Girl Who Drank the Moon by Kelly Barnhill. The Girl Who Drank the Moon by Kelly Barnhill was published in 2016. It is the Newbery Medal Award winner for 2017. She wrote another book you may have heard of called The Witch's Boy in 2015. Yes, there is a witch in the woods. There has always been a witch. Will you stop your fidgeting for once, my stars? I have never seen such a fidgety child. No, sweetheart, I have never seen her. No one has. Not for ages. We've taken steps so that we will never see her. Terrible steps. Don't make me say it. You already know, anyway. Oh, I don't know, darling. No one knows why she wants children. We don't know why she insists that it must always be the very youngest amongst us. It's not as though we could just ask her. She hasn't been seen. We make sure that she will never be seen. Of course she exists. What a question. Look at the woods. So dangerous. Poisonous smoke and sinkholes and boiling geysers and terrible dangers every which way. Do you think it is so by accident? Rubbish. It was the witch. And if we don't do as she says, what will become of us? You really need me to explain it. I'd rather not. Oh, hush now, don't cry. It's not as though the Council of Elders is coming for you, now is it? You're far too old. From our family? Yes, dearest. Ever so long ago, before you were born. He was a beautiful boy. Now finish your supper and see to your chores. We'll all be up early tomorrow. The day of sacrifice waits for no one, and we must all be present to thank the child who will save us for one more year. Your brother? How could I fight for him? If I had, the witch would have killed us all, and then where would we be? Sacrifice one or sacrifice all. That is the way of the world. We couldn't change it if we tried. Enough questions. Off with you, fool child. So The Girl Who Drank the Moon is about this sad little town called the Protectorate. The Protectorate is on the edge of a very large and dangerous forest that is said to be cursed by the bad witch who lives there. That is what they say, anyway, even though nobody has ever seen the witch. The forest sits on a large underground volcano and has lots of bogs, old gnarled trees, and hot springs in the earth that bubble up hot acid and other putrid gases that can kill you. This is seen as proof by the town that the forest is obviously cursed by a witch who lives there. The town is ruled by a small group of old men called the Council of Elders who make all the decisions and officiate the Day of Sacrifice. The Day of Sacrifice happens on the same day every year where the youngest infant is taken by the Council of Elders through a procession through town that everyone must watch. The Council takes the baby out into the woods to a special spot and leaves it there. The Council says that this is a sacrifice demanded by the witch who lives in the forest, that the people must give, lest she destroy the town and everyone in it. That is what they say, anyway. The truth is that the council just says this to the people to maintain their authority and keep the people in check. They just assume that the baby is probably eaten every year by a wild animal. Oh, but little do they know that in actuality, there really is a witch, a good witch named Zan, who has lived for hundreds of years. She lives in the forest in a house with goats, chickens, a friendly swamp monster named Glurk, and a tiny dragon named Firion. 
Zan is infamous in the free cities found on the other side of the forest, where people from the Protectorate never visit. She is known for being a healer and giving good advice. Zan has also been coming to that special spot every year on the edge of the forest and rescues the baby left by the town. She has no idea why they keep doing it, but she takes the baby and travels across the forest where she gives it to an appreciative family in one of the free cities. To feed the babies as she travels across the forest, Zan will use her magic to feed them starlight. This starlight gives the baby a special blessing. It makes them lucky. They grow up and have happy lives in the free cities, and the families there have come to know Zan for delivering these babies, which are commonly referred to as star children. So one day, the day of sacrifice comes, and the Council of Elders comes to the unlucky home of the youngest baby in the Protectorate. The mother refuses to give up the baby, and the child is taken by force. This eventually causes the mother to go mad with grief, and they lock her up in a tower. The new recruit to the Council of Elders is a young man named Antain, who is present during the Day of Sacrifice. He is unaware that the bad witch is just a lie. And when the baby is left in the special place, he never forgets her or her mother. Of course, nothing bad happens to the baby because Zan rescues her and crosses the forest to give her to a family in the free cities like she has done many times already. But when Zan reaches into the night sky to feed the baby starlight, she does so absentmindedly and accidentally feeds the baby moonlight instead of starlight. This is a very different matter entirely. Starlight just blesses a baby, but moonlight enmagics the baby, making her into a powerful magic user. Zan knows that there is no way that a human family could ever raise such a powerful being, and she decides that she must adopt the baby as her granddaughter and raise her herself. Much of the book is the story of Luna, the girl, the baby girl, and how Zan raises her. Luna grows up a relatively happy child with Zan on her farm with her chickens and goats. Glurk, the gentle swamp monster and poet who lives with them, gives Luna advice whether she asks for it or not, and Firion, the tiny dragon, is almost like a little brother to Luna. Still, Luna often dreams about a mad woman locked in a tower. She often feels that she is meant for something else, something more. The character roster for this book is a bit lengthy. There are a lot of characters, but they are each distinct and play a part in the complex plot. The story is timeless, yet original. It has elements found in all of fantasy and fairy tales, but the combination and execution of these elements is highly original with a novel premise. The story includes dragons, magic prophecy, fate, good witches, bad witches, underdogs, injustices, journeys, and intergenerational relationships. The type of topics and plot points that you would expect from this genre it bears a lot of similarities to other children's books that have risen to the ranks of timeless classics, such as the Narnia series, The Wizard of Oz, and Grimm's Fairy Tales. Like these other stories, there are long journeys, there are dark, scary moments, and injustices. The Girl Who Drank the Moon by Kelly Barnhill. Ask your local school or children's librarian about it today.